Hello, nerds. I'm Jimmy. And I'm still Kyle. So this morning I woke up and I saw a post from my man Kyle about this thing from the NFL. So are you talking about the toy thing? That is exactly what I'm talking about. The thing about. with the toys. I rushed over, legitimately rushed over because they're playing in England. So it was an early game, mm -hmm. even especially in Vegas. And I watched a bit of this. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated. What Jimmy's talking about is the NFL and Toy Story partnered up on an event that has been like on, I don't, I don't even know how they came up with this idea, but so they decided to run a game uh, in England. So the NFL is in England right now for two weeks, I believe. And while they did that, they were like, you know what? What if we just also had this take place in the Toy Story universe at the same time? Because apparently... England is just as crazy as Andy's room, from my understanding. But moral of the story is they used AI technology. They used visuals of basically just putting all of the players on a field inside Andy's room. And no one was expecting any of this. And it was hardly even being talked about up until I decided to cover it, I feel yeah. like. And then I just saw it kind of go crazy from there. But... With this being said, do you think that it opens a door for like families to get more involved in football together? What do you think that they were trying to achieve with this game? I, I feel like as a 46-year-old man who this was not marketed to, mm -hmm. I feel like it was a hammer to the point of what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a great idea. I definitely think they're trying to get younger generations mm -hmm involved with football there's been a lot of issues with football with concussions mm -hmm. and how dangerous the sport is literally people dying on the field on tv and they have to mitigate that to be like well this is entertainment and i thought they did a fantastic job by taking this entity that crosses generations mm -hmm. in toy story and placing it in andy's room and i got to give props to Booger McFarland, who was one of the announcers on the game, mm -hmm. and I believe the other one was Drew Carter, mm -hmm. they played into this. Mm -hmm. Like, at one point, there was a little tussle, this is the third quarter, between players, and Booger McFarland's like, we don't need that kind of thing in Andy's room. And I'm like, this is awesome. They owned it. I love that they played along with this. And I thought that was perfect. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, I felt like, and I, don't, I honestly was watching this, and very rarely do I have this, where it's like, I don't know how they're pulling this off mm -hmm. because it was live. Right. But the graphics were definitely like uh, Nintendo GameCube. Mm -hmm. We are not watching um, current Madden football graphics. We are watching like old school. You see glitches and stuff and like, oh, mm -hmm. wow, that's a little disorienting. Hard to watch at times. It felt like with that being said that you had the toy story like cut scenes that they were interjecting into yes. like the sideline stuff that those were all very pre-rendered very yeah, yeah, beautiful yeah, objects yeah. and then the actual gameplay and the footage seemed like it was like in between toy story two and three in a way yeah and they still had the like glitches of like you're tracking people right so yes. with this ai technology that they had for this they're again just tracking a body so but they only have so much space so if someone gets this close to someone then you start to see them like jitter together yeah. and like there's just little technological issues that like the line every time and this was what cool they had the claw come down put the football down but every mm -hmm. time they would show the lineman it was all of a sudden the football's going to the wrong place mm -hmm. and then the line would adjust over just mm -hmm. hilarious with a glitch and i'm like okay that's funny so there are some things to work on in this space, but as far as a first idea and a first run, I think it went pretty well. And I think that it was a really cool idea to get, you know, minus the fact that it took place at 6 a.m. on the West Coast here. And we're Not all cool, dude. I couldn't even get uh, my fiance to wake up to watch it with me. Yeah. She just didn't care kind of thing so well, i was... And it was jacksonville versus atlanta so it's not like it was a top-notch game either right so but one of the things i get did the time right one of the things i also didn't understand yes it was played in england and mm -hmm. i was switching back to the live version mm -hmm. hilarious watching english fans and it was at wembley stadium which is a huge soccer football stadium all the fans had jerseys from all 32 teams it was hilarious the patriots was the jersey i saw the most and they weren't there which cracks me up. But 
some of the cut scenes, which were pre-rendered, mm -hmm. was Bo Peep juggling a soccer ball. Yeah, and I'm like, um, wrong one. I get it; it's in England, but if you're watching from Andy's room, you have no idea that it's in England. <laughs> right. So I didn't quite understand how that crossed over. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that either. I did see her, you know, uh, you know, juggling the football on the sidelines, and I was thinking, I was like, I don't know if they're trying to make a joke here, kind of like how they yeah. did with that uh, commercial of like someone saying football and then yeah. they argue and then yeah. all the people come out. I don't know if that's what they were trying to play into, but it looked like they were just trying to empower kids to play sports in general, right? And I liked how the, even the commercials from Andy's room were very uh, basic, kid-friendly, fun. Mm -hmm. um, they described a lot of the rules of what was going on. So it was very... Very uh, educational. I, yes, I don't want to say dumbed down. You're right. Education is a great way to go to introduce people to football that might not have ever wanted to be in football. Yeah, so basically the target audience was children and Taylor Swift fans. And I think they succeeded. <laughs> I think so too. And I, I want to see more. I really like when they kind of did this with Nickelodeon on a much mm -hmm. lower level as far as oh, highlights in the slime zone and stuff that like that. That was the next question that I had is, do you think that they will continue to do these type of games in order to get a next generation involved and hyped about football? Or do you think that it was kind of like a one-off, kind of like how they do, what is it, the puppy bowl after yeah, the thing? Like, yeah. I, I feel like this will continue. I am not a fan of esports. Just putting it out there. Mm -hmm. I am the old man who was like, why would I watch somebody playing a video game when I can play a video game myself? But a good friend of mine, I will give a shout out to Baldwin Wallace in Berea, Ohio, who Chuck Campisi said, what are you doing with professional sports? You're watching a professional sport and you are not playing that sport. Oh my God. Great. Now you just opened up eSports and you made it make sense to me. Fantastic. That being said, I'm not a fan of watching eSports, but mm -hmm. this generation that's growing up is. Mm -hmm. So them watching eSports version of live sports makes complete sense. And I think as they fine tune the actual animation and the fact that the live broadcasters were totally buying into it and on board and playing along with it, I really think as long as the ratings were there, they're going to keep doing this. The only other thing that I think that I wished I had seen a bit more of is maybe like a picture in picture of like what the actual game looked like That's at a good the point. time. I don't know if it just was some of the animation and the roughness in the beginning that like it felt like when they were taking time out to things like that, it just kind of felt. Like there was just this wandering camera and it there there was an injury when yeah. i was watching it and it was like they didn't know exactly what to do right with the ai and the injury and thank goodness because i don't really want to see a ai version of an injury it just slides yeah. off. but um they, they clearly didn't know what to do as far as filler time mm -hmm. in there whereas when you're on live they cut the highlights and replays right. and commercials and things like yeah. that and they didn't have the luxury of that so it's like they kind of made up a lot of stuff on the fly yeah. and again shout out to those announcers because they did play into the entire like aspect of it but i would like to see a bit of the real game i guess maybe that's only as like a like an older person watching yeah. like i don't know if the kids cared by any means but like i'd feel like if you just maybe cut it in somewhere at some place or like i don't know I just felt like that was what was missing the most about it. And that's where I feel bad for Kyle because he's realizing this was not marketed towards him. He's too old. I'm sorry, millennial. Welcome to my world. 